in someone else. There is so much of you that I can work with. If I could take all that you think you are, and 60% of what you actually are, I'd commit myself to you wholly. And that's coming from someone with a history of commitment issues. I went looking, found you, and thought I found it. But regardless of what this is, I can go with that. I can walk away. I think we both forgot how good I am at holding my own hand. Like maybe it's just a question of linguistics. Maybe we just have different definitions of the word. But you being someone who is so good with words, so much better than me with words, I don't understand all the trouble I'm having understanding you. It got to the point where I was holding my breath, trying to see what you saw, and it helped at first, when everything went blurry. But then the headaches started, and I, I kept almost passing out, and in yoga they say it's not good to hold your breath. I don't understand how someone so good with words can have absolutely zero attachment to their effect on a body. It took me becoming the man we both thought you were for me to see each of us clearly. And I don't get to blame you. The only reason we found each other after all is because our puzzle pieces fit so perfectly. It was like we were made for each other. My fear of heights interlocking precisely with your fear of depths, giving us a very secure moment. I keep telling myself I don't get to choose someone because of their locked doors and blame them for my bloody knuckles. But I really thought it was temporary. I thought we would both be ready to let each other in at some point. It was a genuine surprise for me to see I was standing alone, letting the heat out with my front door ajar. And I was certain that I was doing something wrong, that I had done something wrong, but open is open, right? I am so good at self-punishment. Also the reason we did so well together. So I guess I was the one that changed. Even though you were the one that lied, I was the one that, that betrayed us. I was the one that thought what we had was temporary, could be fixed, that a marriage bed could be made in red flags. Of course we still love each other. But what I learned from you is that there are better things, or more valuable things, or there's still hope in me that there is, and that is valuable. Walking away from this to avoid losing that, that seems worth it. It was okay for me to keep hurting myself in my 20s, cute even. It was kind of funny to keep trying to make brick walls into beds in the way that staying in hostels is fun at 18, suffering and discomfort worth the adventure for the story. But I already know this story. Backwards and forwards with all of the alternate endings, I was trying to not know what I know. Ignoring the aches and the strains, I was stretching and contorting anything to find some relief. But what every control freak has to learn is that sometimes all an injured limb needs to heal is to be left alone. I don't think I get to fix us. And God damn it, is that difficult for me to accept, but being angry with you is obviously just me missing the point. My lesson here is in letting go. Letting you go. I want to not have to blame myself. I want to stay a victim. I want still to be saved. But what I hadn't noticed was how far along I'd come. It took losing you for me to take a look around for maybe the first time ever, and what I saw is that this single income household can afford to make her bed an Egyptian cop. So even though I would love to keep banging my head against you. You're not proving to be worth the $10 a week I'm spending on Advil. <laughs> so 
so in two weeks. <laughs> or six months. Or a year and a half. When we're missing each other. We have to remind ourselves this was the best we could do.